sa inyo pong kadakilaan sa bawat isa at sa inyo pong walang hanggang pag-ibig sa bawat isa sa amin. Panginoon, Patawaran sa lahat ng aming pagkukulang at pagkakasala sa buong sanlinggo na aming pong buhay. Maaari po ba Panginoon na kami po ay samasamang linisin, likhaan ng panigbagong puso't isipan upang kami ay maging karapat dapat sa inyong pong harapan. Maraming maraming salamat Ama sa inyong pong patuloy, mapatnubay at gabay sa inyong pong pag-ibig sa bawat isa sa amin na aming pong naranasan sa buong sanlinggo. Sa araw-araw na kami pong ginising, binigyan, sinamahan, sinag hapon ng aming pong mga ginagawa sa karunungan ng pagdidesisyon sa aming pong uh, paggawa sa inyong pong ministerio o Diyos. Ang Panginoon, aming
enough by my parents that I could that I could sacrifice not being with them just to study because I believe I could um, I believe education really helps us yes and then given those stuff na na experience ko na hindi ako enough for my family na hindi enough yung love that I I am experiencing and I realized now why cannot I have single friend na I can go to and and the Lord, you know what, one thing that the Lord really, really, since day one that I experienced that, na binigay niyang comfort sa akin is this thought, this, this blessing, this lesson in life, this reflection in life that, you know what, Jean, I did not intend to give, to give you any human being to be with para maging punta, puntahan mo or a go-to person for you to be comforted, just to be, just for you to feel love. The thing is that I want you to come to me. I am your best friend. I am the one who could love you. I could, I could love you unconditionally without anything that, any, any condition. And since day one that I have felt, the, I, have fe I have felt those experiences before, that is such a wonderful comfort that I carry with me since 13 years old up to this 27-year-old that is in front of you. So that's it. The Lord is close to those who are brokenhearted and crushed in spirit. And whenever we feel that we are unloved, uncared of, we can always go to Jesus here. He is our best friend, our savior, our redeemer, our everything. I believe that we all have experiences and I should end my testimony now. And I hope and I pray that we will always treat the Lord as our best friend despite, uh, despite others or other um unfavorable situations or experiences we have in our lives. So that would be all. Happy Sabbath, everyone, and God bless us all. in my eyes how can I live with this feeling inside and on my knees you help me to see that your love reaches even me Lord why do you love me still when world, what a message to see, what I hope do I have everywhere there is seems, and on my knees you help me to see that your love reaches me.
Thanks for that beautiful song. Help me to love you each day. There's a change of our topic for tonight. Instead of boundary trespassing that will be presented tomorrow night, it will be fear of death and dying. Or thanatophobia. Thanato means death. How many of you are afraid of death. Nobody is afraid? Good. That means you are normal people. <laughs> and those of you who have not raised your hands, you are still normal. <laughs> okay. I got an invitation to conduct a similar mental health and gospel series at Bacolod in July after I arrived from U.S. and Canada. And then a month after, God willing, I'll be presenting this also in San Jose uh, Mindoro, Occidental Mindoro. After that, I don't know where, but somehow as God leads, then I'll be glad to present this new approach of presenting the gospel to make it more relevant to our needs. For tonight, we'll be considering people who are like you and me that have second thoughts when it comes to dying. Okay. Now, especially at my age, 78, I don't know how many years more, but somehow tonight, this will renew my confidence in God that would comfort me, give me courage to face what lies ahead. Here's a man by the name of Dave, age 50, was given six months to live by his physician. Aside from his diseased kidneys, he was diagnosed to have lung cancer, which has spread throughout his whole body. For 25 years, he had been smoking two to three packs of cigarettes a day. Dave has thanatophobia, fear of death and dying. As he pleads with God to spare his life, Dave would religiously go to confession and then communion and mass as often as possible. He would pray the rosary and plead for the intercession of the Blessed Mother Mary as well as the various saints. Despite his religiosity, Dave still wonders what would be his fate or destiny 
when he dies? Where will I be? Now, we are going to study the gospel's answer to Dave's death anxiety or panic disorder. Death, based on the scripture, is asleep. Ang kamatayan ay tulog. Jesus said, our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go and that I may wake him up. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Verse 14. Here was King David who prayed to God, Take note and answer me, O Lord my God. Brighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Psalm 13, verse 3. Now dead people do not praise the Lord. Those in the grave are silent, who go down in silence. Psalms 115, verse 17. So when I die, I will just be sleeping, the sleep of death. Matutulog lang ako ng tulog ng kamatayan. I'll just lie there in the grave. And stay there in silence. Now what will happen to my body? And my spirit when I die? Ecclesiastes 12 verse 7. Your body came from the earth. And when you die it will return to the earth. But your spirit came from God. And when you die it will return to him. Ecclesiastes 12 verse 7. Yes, our bodies will return to the dust of the earth and the breath of life, that is the spirit, ruwa, or nephesh, will go back to God who gave it to us. Now what does that mean? And the Lord God formed man in the slime or in the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostril, into his face, the breath of life. And man became what? A living soul. And ang tao ay naging buhay na kaluluwa. Now, soul refers to the whole being or personhood which is synonymous with personality, which is a reflection of the God's image. It may refer to the individuality, which is defined by Ellen White as the power to think and to do. Or it may refer to the personal identity which remains preserved. In the book of life, as well as in the book of remembrance and the book of death in heaven. And this personal identity makes me distinct from you and vice versa. That's the soul. Now, what happens to the soul at death? M almost all. Non-Adventist Christians believe on the immortality of the soul. But whose doctrine is this? Now when Eve was tempted by the serpent or Satan and, he, and she quoted what God said, we are forbidden to eat this fruit, the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. Neither touch it because we will surely die. And then the serpent said, you will not die. So you see, that's the only person referring to Satan who would teach that soul never dies. But here in Ezekiel 18 verse 4, the person which is the soul who sins is the one who will die. So you see, the Bible is so plain that the soul is not immortal. The soul is mortal. The soul sins and the soul dies. Now, let me illustrate that with a bulb representing the body. And then you go to the switch and put on 
okay, the current representing the spirit. And what will happen to the bulb? It becomes a light. Is there? Now, if I switch off, the current goes back to where it is from the bulb. Okay, what? Where is the light? The light just disappears. But you know, there's a difference between the soul of a Christian believer and the soul of the unbelievers. What will be the difference? When in fact it says there the soul that sins will die. Well, we'll find out what the gospel says. The living know that they will die. But the dead don't know anything. They have mo no more reward. Person will soon forget them. So that will happen to me when I die. People here at AUP, a number of them had been my students. They will soon forget me. After people are dead, what happens to their love? Their love, hate, and jealousy are all gone. And they will never again share in what happens on earth. Now that reminds me of my first wife who for two years suffered from cancer. And she said, I want you to remarry three months after I get buried because nobody will care for you. You don't know how to cook, okay? Who will take care of you? Imagine that. But many wives will not say that way. Pag ikaw nag-asawa, ako'y babangon at ilahin ko ang iyong mga pa. I'm going to rise up and pull your legs. He said that. So never remarry. Imagine that. How would she know? Paano pa niya malalaman? Because it says there that the living know they will die, but they, the dead don't know anything. Is there? Now, I just said there is a difference between the soul of the Christian believers from the souls who don't believe in God. Where is the difference? Well, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. John 10 verse 11. And I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Kailan may hindi sila mamamatay. I thought. You said based on the Bible that that soul sins and shall die. How come it says here they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Well gifted with eternal life. Our relationship with God remains intact. Amen? We will just remain in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the physical life, which is in Greek, is bios. That's the one that dies. And the gift is zoe, eternal life, everlasting life. And that's the one that never ends because it is the gift. Of Jesus Christ. Only the believers, those who believe in Jesus Christ as the life and the resurrection, will be gifted with eternal life, whereas those atheists, the wicked, the unbelievers, who will never be gifted with eternal life, theirs is bios, physical life, and they are dead. You see that? You see the difference now? Yes, my body goes back to the dust. My spirit goes back to my creator. My physical life is dead. But because of eternal life, I continue to exist in the mind and the heart of Jesus Christ. Amen? Yeah. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, do he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. 
the connection remains intact. That's the beauty of a person who dies with faith in Jesus Christ. For you died and your life which is Zoe has been hidden with Christ in God. The eternal life that Jesus Christ would give me based on my faith in him remains hidden with Christ in God. Now, did King David, a very good king whose heart is after God, did he go to heaven when he died? Roman Catholics and Protestants would say yes. But let's base the answer on the Bible. Where is he? That reminds me of my sister who was baptized as seven Adventist and then she married a Catholic and then her husband passed away and she remarried but every time her first husband, you know, her birthday comes, she would greet him, happy birthday, birth in heaven. Imagine that. <laughs> okay. And then my sister would also greet our father who was born on February 14, that's Valentine's Day. Papa, happy birthday in heaven. But remember, the Bible says otherwise. As is stated by Apostle Peter, brothers and sisters, I can speak confidently about the patriarch David. He died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this very day. Acts 2, verse 29, and in verse 34, David did not ascend into heaven. Now whom shall I believe? Would I believe the priest and the pastor's coming from various Protestant churches, or would I rest my faith on what the Bible says? David did not ascend into heaven. Now, here is the hope, the blessed hope, that those of us who believe in Jesus Christ and are gifted by the eternal life Though our body goes back to the dust and our physical life, the bios is ended and we just sleep in silent there in the grave. But somehow that eternal life, the life of Jesus in us. When we say eternal life, that's the life of Jesus in us. Galatians 2 verse 20, Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And since Jesus Christ lives in us, we have his life, eternal life. And that life remains asleep in him. That life remains hidden in him, in God. Now, Paul said in 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13 to 15, but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep. Lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even to God, will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. That goes to show that there are people who sleep in the grave, but they don't sleep in Jesus. That is the difference. And so, when I die, I see to it that I I sleep, but I need to sleep in Jesus. And anyone who sleeps in Jesus never dies. Because the life of Jesus, the eternal life is in him. And he remains in the hands of Jesus Christ. And no one can snatch him, not even the devil can snatch him from the hands of Jesus Christ. He sleeps in the mind and the heart of Jesus for this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. Yes, when Jesus Christ comes down, and then in a shout, he would say, rise up, wake up. 
And only those who sleep in Jesus will wake up. And those who did not sleep in Jesus for lack of faith will continue sleeping there. They will not wake up at all. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. I like that. Now here, day by day, we are with the Lord. And through the Holy Spirit, the Lord lives in us. He's there. Death shall never separate us from Jesus. We sleep in Jesus when we die. And then when he comes, we will rise up. But those who did not sleep in Jesus, those who have no eternal life, will not rise up. They will continue sleeping in the dust, in the grave. Until when? It says there, okay, and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Yes, they will wake up, but not to everlasting life. They will wake up later to shame and everlasting contempt. When will this be? Well, Revelation 20 verses 4 to 6, they all came to life again. And who are these people? And they reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Yes, in Christ's second coming, those who died with faith in God, in Jesus Christ, and gifted with eternal life, will rise to meet the Lord in the air, together with those who remain alive. And we will be changed, of course, no longer with this body, this physical body. First Corinthians chapter 15, that this body will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. From mortal to immortal, from physical to spiritual, from earthly to heavenly. I look forward to that. Being there. And then it says further here that we will reign with Christ for a thousand years. This is the first resurrection. Only those who are believers in Jesus Christ who sleep there in the grave and are in the hands of Jesus Christ will rise. He's there. Now, the rest of the dead, referring to the wicked, the unbelievers did not come back to life until the thousand years had ended. Blessed therefore, and holy are those who share in the first resurrection. For to them, for them, the second death holds no power. But they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him a thousand years. There will be a second resurrection. But not for the righteous, for they will be resurrected in the first resurrection. Now, that is the answer. The gospel's answer to our death anxiety. To those of us who have that panic disorder whenever we think of death or dying. When will the wicked and the unbelievers be resurrected? How will they punish? The rest of the dead did not come back to life until the thousand years had ended. When the thousand years come to an end, Satan will be let out of the prison. This earth, dark, according to Jeremiah, no light at all, and then empty because all the people are dead. And Satan and his angels will be the only one alive. Now, whom will they tempt? And that's why it is pictured there in Revelation chapter 20 that Satan will be released from prison. He will be bound 
by circumstances, by the change of circumstances. And at the end of thousand years, they, he will be released, let out of his prison. And then the wicked, those who, follow, those who have followed Satan will be resurrected in the second resurrection. After the 1,000 years are over, he will go down. He will go out to deceive the nations, the wicked again, and call Gog and Magog in every corner of the earth. He will gather them together for a battle, a mighty army. Take note of the numbers of those people who will be resurrected in the second resurrection, and Satan will again gather them. Their number, it says they're numberless, a son along the seashore. And I saw them as they went up on the broad plain of the earth and surrounded God's people and the beloved city. Yes, those who got resurrected in the first resurrection and taken to heaven together with those who remain alive. And then they will reign with Jesus Christ for 1,000 years. And they will reside in the New Jerusalem, the holy city. Now that holy city based on Revelation chapter 21 verse 1 will come down. Uh, verse 2 will come down. It says there that it that will rest on the Mount Olives based on Malachi. You see that? Now, the wicked led by Satan will surround that holy city in order to capture that city. But somehow it says there, and I saw them as they went up on the broad plain of the earth and surrounded God's people and the beloved city. But fire from heaven came down on the attacking armies and consumed them. This lake of fire. Imagine that. It can, when we say lake of fire, that must be a liquid fire. Just like what comes out from volcano. That lake of fire is the second death. Now, most Christians believe, especially those who came from the papal church, that there is hell. And then people, the wicked, will be put there in hell and they will be punished day and night with no end at all. It will be an eternal torment, but the Bible says in Malachi chapter 4 that there will be ashes, you see. Now there's second death. When we say second death, that's the end, you see. There's no such tor eternal torment. Can you see now, if we don't study the Bible, we can easily be deceived by the former faith of our parents and grandparents. I came from the Roman Catholic Church. Thank God that I got the light of truth based on my study of the gospel. After all the wicked and the unbelievers on this earth are burned in hell fire, where will be our new home? On that day, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 12 and 13, it says there, he will set the heavens on fire. You see. Take note of that. Plural. This can refer to the atmospheric heaven as well as to the starry heaven. And the elements will melt away in the flames. That must be a strong and intensity of fire melting the elements there of the heavens. But we are looking forward to the new heavens and the new earth. Is there. As he has promised, a world filled with God's righteousness. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared and the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, look, God's home is now coming, his people. 
among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. And that's what lies ahead, brethren, you see. Yes, we'll be shedding some tears because some of our lovers will not be in that new Jerusalem. We will see them cast into the lake of fire. You see, I don't want to point my finger who among my siblings and my relatives will be there. Only God knows. You see there. For some of them, just before they passed away, they have repented just like the thief on the cross. At the last moment, who knows the person may cry out in repentance. You see. What is the gospel's answer to our death anxiety and panic disorder? Here is the, the promise of Jesus. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. And trust also in me. There is more than enough room in a father's home. If this were not so, I would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you. When everything's ready, I will come again and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. What an assurance, you see there. Will I be afraid of dying when I have that blessed hope? What I need is just to trust God's word, the promise of Jesus. That as long as I remain believing in him, trusting in him, Jesus said, you will never die. I have gifted you with eternal life. You will your life will just be hidden with me in God. And no one can snatch you out from my hand. Oh, Lord, thank you. That even though my physical life dies, yet I remain in you. you see. I just sleep there until you come down and call for me. And then I will get up from that grave to answer your call. Thank you, Jesus, for assuring me to bring me where you are in heaven. You see there. Thank you for promising me that I will reign with you for 1,000 years. And thank you for that reservation of a room. Of course, as husband and wives will no longer remain married there, but will be like angels. You see there. I don't know, I cannot picture that. You see there. Yeah. But somehow, that's the gospel's response to those of you who have that fear of death, fear of dying. Though it's normal to be afraid of that, but if we cannot control our, our fear, our death anxiety, then it's no longer normal. It becomes a disorder. But here is the wonderful promise. Yeah. Let's reflect on this as we listen to the appeal song.
Until he comes. Now Jesus wants to have you and me from day to day. He is our shepherd and he takes care of every sheep, every one of us. Now he said that he is the life and the resurrection and he wants you and he wants me to remain with and in him. So tonight, I want to testify I don't know how many years more, although I bargained with God, Lord, if it be possible, let me live until age 85. And others said, why 85? You will not receive that 100,000 pesos from the government. <laughs> you see, be sure you reach at 100, age 100. Well, I'm not after that money. What I'm after is to remain in Jesus. You see, there's no difference whether I die tonight, hopefully not, <laughs> okay? or I die at the age 85 or at the age of 100. What is valid is that I remain always in Jesus, come what may. And if ever I die, what is ended there is just my bias, my physical life. And that eternal life, the Zoe, the life of Jesus in me will continue on and I just remain asleep in him, in his hand. And no one can snatch me from that hand. Is there? Now that eternal life will continue on, which is different from immortal life. Immortal life is the absence of death and that will be given when this body of mind will be changed from physical to spiritual, from earthly to heavenly, from mortal to immortal. That is the gift, the second gift of immortality. Now friends, those of you who are afraid to die, I said that's normal, normal fear. But if you cannot control that, 
and you tremble. You get so anxious. You can hardly sleep thinking of that. And you don't have the certainty of the first resurrection. Then that's abnormal. There's really a disorder. And the gospel response is just trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. You see. And the Lord is coming soon. And I want him to come soon. Because I don't want to stay on this earth where the intensity of heat is increasing from 32, now it's 42. And soon it will be 52. You see there? I don't want to linger more on this earth. I want that reserved place. In my father's house are many mansions. It's there. I want to be there. Who among you would like to join me and say, Lord, help me to have that blessed hope, the answer to my fear of death and dying, and any time I'm ready, as long as I remain in you and you are in me, living your life in me. Is there anyone who would stand with me and express that blessed hope? Would you like to stand? Our loving God, this we stand because of that blessed hope. Thank you so much for that blessed assurance that even though we die physically, yet spiritually we remain alive in you. We just sleep in you. And the Bible says, O oh Lord, that those who sleep in Jesus will rise up in the first resurrection and be with you for eternity, not only reigning for 1,000 years, but be with you for the ceaseless ages of eternity. We take that assurance, Father, not only as a blessed hope, but a certainty. And we anticipate for that as the Holy Spirit continues to prepare ourselves for that eternity in Jesus name amen now we are going to have a 15 minutes uh, okay sharing the the question now is How do I feel now about death? Okay, I want you to be honest, authentic, and true to yourself. How do I feel now about death? While I am still alive, what does this topic tonight mean to me? Use the I language and share whatever conviction you have, whatever hope, or if you are still afraid, Say it so. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. So let's have a circle by two rows. Okay. Those who are the facilitators, kindly join now. Yeah. Form a circle. I have some, uh, there are some psychologists.